I am Scott Savage, and I am the author of 18 published novels. Uh, these include the uh, Far World Middle Grade Fantasy series, the Case File 13 Middle Grade Horror series, and the Mysteries of Cove uh, Middle Grade Steampunk Dragon series. And I'm super excited about my newest book, The Lost Wonderland Diaries, which is basically the story of a girl with dyslexia whose mother is a librarian and who really kind of hates books and a boy who is the ultimate book nerd who meet each other in a library and discover Lewis Carroll's missing diary. Open up the diary, start to figure out the code inside of it and inadvertently open a doorway to Wonderland. They discover that Wonderland is this amazing magical place that we remember but it's also now really dark and dangerous and things are changing and there are monsters there and there are creatures that we remember one way that are not that way anymore. And they have to figure out not only how to return to Earth, but also how to save Wonderland and bring it back to its original magical, uh, original state. Alice in Wonderland has always been book that I've always loved. Whenever people would say, well, what's your favorite book? That's so hard to pick. But for me, Alice in Wonderland has probably always been at the top of the list. One of the reasons for that is that there's just such a cool mix of logic and imagination. So Charles Dodson, who's Lewis Carroll's real name, uh, was a mathematician and he loved codes and word puzzles and, and he kept diaries his whole life, except after he died, four of his diaries disappeared. How cool would it be to write a story where kids find the four missing diaries and actually travel to Wonderland and discover that things have changed over the last 150 years. I have two main characters in the story. There is Celia, who is a girl uh, who has had dyslexia her entire life. And her mother is a librarian. And that is kind of your initial conflict that the story starts with. Celia struggles between this desire to succeed and to come to grips with her dyslexia. She knows she's smart, but she's afraid that people won't view her as smart. And then you've got Tyrus, who is the consummate book nerd. He loves books. I mean, they meet in a library. She's there because she has to be. He's there because that's where else would he go? So the two of them, again, have this conflict, but we see them working together and we see Tyrus's struggles of not fitting in and him using books as a way to escape from the real world. Both of them have these incredible strengths and, and but they also have these things that they're struggling with and so the two of them work together. I love the Mad Hatter. I mean there are so many wonderful characters in the original Alice in Wonderland but for me the Mad Hatter is just such an intriguing character. That was like a goosebump moment for me was when my characters actually show up at the tea party and there's the Mad Hatter and the March Hare and the Dormouse. Plays a pretty fun role. I, I start each chapter with uh, a quote from Alice in Wonderland. Um, Mine is a long and sad tale, said the mouse, turning to Alice and sighing, curiouser and curiouser, uh, we're all mad here. So these are all quotes from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which is the first Alice in Wonderland book. I don't know that I could pick one quote as a favorite. Maybe the We're All Mad Here by the Cheshire Cat, because I think that's just the heart of Wonderland is really, we are all mad, we're all different, but somehow we all fit in together and make it work. I wanted to write a book that would have uh, a story that kids who had never read Alice in Wonderland or seen the movies could just read and enjoy, just straight adventure. But then I also wanted to have another level 
for people who maybe have seen the movies, maybe they've read the book, but it's been quite a while ago, where they can come back and go, oh yeah, I know the Mad Hatter, and look what happened to the Cheshire Cat, and here's what's changed over here, here's Caterpillar and everything like that. But then I also wanted to have a level for the people who just love Alice in Wonderland like me. And so there are a whole series of Easter eggs. The Lost Wonderland Diaries is for me, sort of like a love letter to Lewis Carroll. Some of the best compliments I've gotten is when people went, I actually had to go back and look at the original Alice in Wonderland to see if that scene you wrote was in the original books or not. So having people feel like this story actually took place in his world is the highest compliment I could get. I hope that all three levels of people can enjoy this story um, and, and find it as a fun ride. When I, before I had even started writing this book, when it was just kind of an idea in my head, I was sort of thinking about what is kind of the message. E each of my series have had just kind of a, a message that ties it together. And you, a, a lot of times you don't even know it when you're starting to write the story. And I did a school visit. And as I was walking down the stairs with my wife, I looked over at the wall of the school along the staircase. And there were all these posters. And there, right in the middle of all these other big, bright posters, was a single sheet of paper. And it had a heart drawn in the middle. And inside was the letter U and then matter. And that just was like a flashbulb moment. And I looked at that and it's like, that's the message. And for me, the message of both the original Alice in Wonderland and what I hope to do in the Lost Wonderland Diaries is to tell kids that every single one of them is incredibly important and they all matter. That the differences that all of us have are what make us wonderful. And the message that I hope that kids will get out of this is that you matter, you are super important.